in terms of writing, I mean, maybe a lot of you know it, but since a lot of students are present as well, it's important for you as students to acknowledge that scientists are writers. First and foremost, you will have to write a thesis, you will have to write papers. So get used to it that primarily you will have written output in the future as well. So that's uh, maybe a good uh, thing in terms of mindset as well. Mm. You should try to invest early in your writing skill as well, since you have long-term benefits over your scientific career. Also, in general, in life, it's good if you can, can write in a, in a good way, um, not just for your papers and your thesis. Um, keep in mind that the foundation for your writing is uh, reading, and not just scientific reading necessarily. So if you read and you uh, put a focus on why this reads well and the other one doesn't, you hone your skill in the long run as well. The fourth point is uh, consider reading about writing as well. That's especially important for non-native speakers. So it can be style guides or manuals or stuff like that. So whichever investment you make, whichever little trick you find, you will benefit from it uh, from that point onwards. And the earlier you do it, the better for you. So the second last point, train resilience. <laughs> the, uh, don't get discouraged. Uh, we all start with like a white paper sheet or a blank screen, let's say. Um, it's always a little hard, but you need to stick to it. Like, uh, you know, they say it takes uh, 10,000 hours to become an expert. So don't give up after 100 hours, let's say. You, you really need to make the investment in the long run. That's why, you know, studying takes almost five years. So that's for some who invest more, it goes a bit quicker. But that's like what it takes to have true mastery, as they say, 10,000 hours. Um, and one last tip that uh, in my research group is sometimes uh, useful is to occasionally try to separate form and content. This can be especially interesting for native speakers as well. It's one thing to be excellent in terms of writing. It's another thing to exclusively talk about the writing and the style and stuff like that as well. So sometimes separating the content, the science from the form, from the writing can be a useful training method. You shouldn't do this all the time, but um, if, uh, if there's too much talk about where does the comma come, you know, should you use who or whom? Is the Oxford comma needed? Maybe you should say, let's stop for a second and just talk about the science. We'll talk about the style afterwards. So that's sometimes a good uh, change of uh, pace, let's say. So here, this is John Ulrich, an editor from Wiley. I'm pandering to the Wiley audience uh, here. Um, the four basic rules of writing, he showed them to us the other day, which I thought was interesting. Uh, firstly, have something to say. Secondly, say it. Uh, thirdly, stop as soon as you have said it. And then lastly, give the paper a proper title. So he was saying that's what um, Advanced Energy Materials uh, wants to see. You know, so, so here you have the four basic rules of good writing, let's say. But there are many more. So this slide, I, I, I stole it somewhere. I can't remember where anymore. So that's why I can't cite it properly. But they are also very elaborate um, uh, sort of like structures, uh, plots uh, on, on how to um, structure your writing. You know. And that's very important, especially at the beginning, to have a very uh, good structure. So introduction, results, discussion. And here they uh, subdivided it in, in this scheme here. Have a big problem, narrow down the problem within, uh, within that big problem, make it even narrower. And that's a good introduction, usually. And having these structures in mind at the beginning is helpful because they are a good starting point. And they help to know you what you should look at. But as always, these kind of like uh, recipes are not the law. They are just a guideline. But still, uh, maybe especially at the beginning when you write your thesis or your first papers, it can be useful to, to see these kinds of things first. Then there's another, so here I could cite it, um, another change of mindset and a recent article in Science, paper writing gone Hollywood. The story is very simple. Think more of your paper uh, as a movie, let's say. So you have different figures and you try to be a movie director. So you try to tell a story, you try to connect the figures. That's also to say, often making the figures is the first step, not the article necessarily. So if you have good figures, often the story comes from them afterwards as well. So that's something for you to consider when you write up your, your stuff. Have good figures. Uh, usually that moves uh, the project forward very uh, well. And then when you have figures, um, it, it fits very well into the mindset of movie making, let's say. So a story along the figures, it's more close perhaps to movie making. Try to tell an exciting story, kind of. Accurate, of course, but still, like, try to make it uh, interesting. Then visualization matters, so that's very important. Uh, figures are very important. Try to make them meaningful. So this is an example, and I'll show you in a second where it comes from. 
here on the left side, you see some graph. It talks about like the food content of different kinds of foods. But you can see this graph is full of uh, redundant information. You know, it says uh, food here. It says food here at the bottom on the x-axis. It has a lot of like unnecessary colors in there as well. And there's one very useful thing, and I'm very grateful to my supervisor during my master's, try to maximize the data by ink ratio. Try to have as much data in there as, as needed and as little unnecessary ink as possible. And if you do that for this particular graph, on the left side, you end up on the right side all, all of the sudden. The right graph has the same information as the left graph, but it uses much less ink. And for most people, it's much clearer because of that. You know, it's, it's the same in writing. Usually when, when you can delete a word and it doesn't change the meaning, you should delete that word. And it's similar with the graphs as well. If you can delete a line which isn't really needed, delete it. Just have what is needed within the graph. So invest your time. And you can see in this beautiful example how the right-hand side is much clearer than the left-hand side. And that's the maximization of the data to ink ratio. And there are many resources on it. Firstly, for, uh, for the first part on, on writing, one a classic resource for good writing is uh, Strunk and White, the elements of style, especially in the English-speaking world, um, which, which is what we are all using uh, usually in, in our paper writing. And one thing which this uh, work is very famous for is to say omit needless words, use the active voice, use uh, parallel constructions on concepts that are parallel. So this is only a 50-page uh, style manual, uh, but it's one of the most read style manuals in the English-speaking world. So it's maybe something to look in. You don't have to become like a literature expert. I mean, you're not studying that, uh, but still it's good to have an idea that other people uh, have information on this already. And then the second uh, work, and that's something that my master supervisor when I was still um, in, in Germany suggested to me, is called the Visual Display of Quantitative Information by Edward Tufte. Uh, he's uh, or Tuft, uh, is an American guy. He's, he's a very well-known expert on this. He's, um, he, he coined uh, the concept of spark lines, for example, which is sort of the most extreme form of only data, no unnecessary ink. It's just like the, the line itself. And here, uh, the, the main takeaways are to avoid busy visuals, to minimize uh, distract distractions within your graphs, to reduce unnecessary ink without information. And there's a lot of interesting information here. And again, you don't have to take any of it necessarily. But uh, I mean, this person, he specialized on beautiful graphs and to transform as much information as possible, to make it as salient as possible for the reader. And I think it's, it's a good investment to think about it, at least at, at one point, maybe to get this book in the library and to um, sort of uh, skim a little bit through it. So that's something to, to maybe as a, as a takeaway.